Okay, continuing on with the ACC, we'll go to the team that I have coming in 11th place in the conference, and that would be Mike Young and the Virginia Tech Hokies. And I feel like if you look at Mike Young and the job he did during his first season as the head coach of Virginia Tech, there's a lot of different ways to evaluate it, and I feel like Virginia Tech is going to be one of those teams where I feel like people's opinion on them are really going to differ. I have Virginia Tech coming in 11th place in the ACC, but... I have seen other people having the Hokies come uh, as high as 7th, and I am not saying that is crazy. I do think the Hokies are not too far behind that tier with your Miamis and your Syracuses and your NC States and your Georgia Techs. I just think I would have them a little bit behind those guys, and I'll explain to you guys why. I think Virginia Tech, if you look at this roster, has 8 or 9 guys that are very capable of playing in an ACC rotation and also they have many guys that to be honest are just very similar in talent level and that's really my issue with this Hokies team I'm not really sure if they have a quote-unquote best player because last year if you remember the Hokies were supposed to be one of the worst teams in college basketball and really from January on they lived up to those expectations they were just not a very good basketball team at all but at the same time the thing is, the Hokies during non-conference play had some really good quality victories, including a big-time marquee victory over Michigan State in Maui. And if you remember in that game, Landers Nolly just went absolutely bonkers. Now, unfortunately, he decided to transfer to Memphis, and I feel like that was really the first big hurdle that Mike White, excuse me, Mike Young, is really going to have to climb over as the head coach of Virginia Tech because the Hokies, they do bring in a lot of talent. And including a lot of guys that returned from last year's squad. You'll start off with Wabi Sabidi. He's a nice pass first point guard. I'm not really sure how many games you could win with him, but he's an experienced guard. And if he, he wants to start your season as your starting point guard, that's fine. He's just a real ball mover, game manager type player at point guard. They also bring back Tyrese Radford, the 6'1 sophomore, who he averaged 10.2 points per game, but 6.2 rebounds per game, and a guy for that is 6'1", you are rarely going to see that in college basketball. So I think Tyrese Radford, he is one of the more unique players in the country. They also bring back Naeem Alin, the 6'3 sophomore. He averaged 8.8 .8 points per game. Cartier Jara, the grad transfer from Kansas State, and here's the thing. It is very rare that you bring in a grad transfer to your program that is an established player and has proved that he can play at an elite level in a conference like the Big 12 and then coming to a conference like the ACC like Cartier Jara is doing. And I feel like if you're a Virginia Tech fan, you should really feel lucky to have a player like Cartier Jara because I understand Kansas State was not a great basketball team last year whatsoever. I totally understand that. But at the same time, Jara did average 13.3 points per game, 3.8 rebounds per game. He's played in a lot of big games throughout his career at Kansas State, including a Sweet 16 and an Elite 8 in the NCAA tournament a couple years ago during his freshman year. And I do think bringing in a guy like that could never hurt a team like Virginia Tech. And then they also bring in Keve Aluma, a guy who played for Mike Young at Wofford in 18-19. The 6'9 redshirt junior averaged 6.9 points per game and 6.8 rebounds per game, really playing with your Fletcher McGee's and your Nate Hoover's of the world. And I feel like if you look at this Virginia Tech team, they do have the possibility to be a little bit similar to those Wofford teams that Mike uh, Young had because they're going to be playing kind of a smaller lineup, I think, around the Aluma. I wouldn't be shocked if they play... BD at the 1, Aline at the 2, Jara at the 3, Radford in the backcourt as well, plus Aluma. And then off the bench, they have some guys that can produce as well. Jalen Cohn, who last year was Virginia Tech's top freshman, he was pretty solid, averaging 8 points per game, 1 rebound per game. He's only 5'10", but I think as he plays more and more in the ACC, he's only going to get better and better. They also bring in the transfer Justin Mutz, the 6'7 redshirt junior from Delaware, playing for the Blue Hens. He averaged 12.2 points per game, 8 rebounds per game. And then they bring back Hunter Couture, one of the more underrated players in the country, in my opinion, and he's a very consistent shooter that is something not a lot of teams in college basketball have. I remember he played very well in that game against Michigan State where Virginia Tech was able to pull off the upset. He averaged 6.5 points per game, 2.5 rebounds per game last year. And I feel like if you look at Virginia Tech season last year as a whole, 
When you consider the low expectations that were surrounding Mike Young and his team's first year in Blacksburg, one would have to call last year a success, despite only going 7-13 and in the ACC. If you remember, they came out of the gates on fire. They actually won at Clemson to start off their season, and then they had the win over Michigan State. But Landers Nally kind of struggled a little bit, and then he ultimately transferred. And then the question is, how are these guys who are going to come back, how are they going to improve if so? Because Alin, he proved to be an effective perimeter threat last year. They bring in Cardi Ajara, who was a primary offensive option as a junior for the Kansas State Wildcats, but in a complimentary role his first two seasons, he shot 38% from three and also brings in some size and some slashing ability. Also, I will give Mike Young credit for his recruiting. You guys know Virginia Tech historically is not a place where college basketball, uh, you know, top recruits come in in order to get to the NBA as soon as possible. But this year, Mike Young does bring in two top 100 recruits in Joe Bamisil and Darius Maddox. Both of those guys can score and they add to Mike Young's style of weapons. Also, the best shooter on the roster Hunter Couture is very good, and Jalen Cohn. He could really shoot as well, and he is going to be one of Virginia Tech's top contributors off the bench. He shot 45% from three last year, which maintaining his efficiency even as his minutes shot up in conference play. And I think he could kind of be similar to Fletcher McGee because he's smaller and he does have the ability to shoot on the move. And I feel like that kind of game and style makes him a really good fit for Mike Young and the sets he runs. And then they also bring back um, Tyrese Radford. He's very unique because he's a combination of a guy who can really rebound and lacks the positional algorithms that your traditional shooting guard will have. He's very skilled and a solid athlete, and his two-way effectiveness helped key the defense of Virginia Tech last year. I'm curious to see, now that there's a little bit more of a book on him, if that's going to continue, because Tyrese Radford was one of the more effective Hokies last year, but the country really didn't know the style that he would play with. I'm curious, now that there is a little bit more of a book on him, what that looks like. And the bottom line for the Hokies is this. Last season, they started off very impressively, and Mike Young has done a really good job on the recruiting trail. He's integrated himself to the Hokie fan base already, and with a roster more ready for ACC competition and a year of experience for last year's freshman class, I feel like expectations have kind of risen for these Hokies a little bit, and the offense should be formidable with Aluma. They also bring in Cordero Pencil, the uh, transfer from Iowa, and I do think Virginia Tech has much more depth than last year. If you remember, they really didn't have any size at all. So I have the Hokies coming in 11th. I have them razor thin behind Clemson. And they're not that far behind your Syracuses, your NC States, and your Georgia Techs of the world. And I feel like, once again, that's kind of what makes this ACC conference so good compared to other years is because of the depth. That was something this league last year certainly did not have. So I have Virginia Tech coming in 11th in the ACC. I think they are right behind that middle tier.